High winds cut power to thousands on shore. On the water, high winds and rough seas snapped the tow line between the tug Florence M and the barge Suo Kushan. The experienced tug captain tried to re-rope the listing barge, but it didn't take. The 100-meter barge is sitting on a sandy shoal off the shores of Pictou Island in Nova Scotia, Canada. The barge was carrying 6,400 tons of wood and machinery. 5,000 tons of timber is in the water and starting to wash up on the shores of Pictou County. This is what remains, and it goes down deep into the cargo hold. Stand by on the spud, Ben. Yeah. Start lowering. McKeel Marine is working on a plan to salvage the barge. A technical team of engineers and salvage experts was dispatched immediately to assess the situation. Meet Chris Kirby. He's in charge. And Tim McKeel, Chris's right-hand man. We're hoping uh, seven or eight hours of pumping and she's coming up. Along with their team, they've assembled a crew of local experts to help in the recovery. But they won't be alone out on the water. The Coast Guard, Transport Canada, and the Department of Fisheries will be watching and listening as the salvage operation unfolds. And on shore, local fishermen and the media are quick to spread word. Insurance adjusters are also watching, waiting to see what shape the barge will be in. It's the end of November, and the marine season here in the Northumberland Strait will soon end. The weather could pose a challenge. A key piece of equipment in the recovery, the Jackup 600, has arrived. It's being adapted to tackle this job. Once it's out there, that's basically our, uh, our platform that we're going to work from. We need a, a stable base to, to put our pumps on, put our generators on, and then once the barge floats, we need to be able to hang onto the barge, so this will actually be an anchor point for the refloating. It's a full day of preparations. Along with the jackup, the barge Jean Raymond, the tugs Florence M and Wyatt M, there are cranes, excavators, pumps, hundreds of feet of hose, and thousands of other parts to make this operation a go. The setup crew works late into the night loading gear, and snow starts to fall. The crew has some luck. The snowfall was just a dusting, and it looks like a clear day ahead. With the Jackup 600 ready and supplies loaded, it's time to head to the Suo Kushan. A second barge will take the offloaded wood. The cranes get quickly to work, lightering the load. Lightering is the process of transferring cargo between vessels. They need to lighten the load to reduce the barge's draft. It's like pick up sticks here, pick the wrong bundle and more timber falls into the water. That would anger area fishermen who see the timber as a hazard. This isn't a job that can be rushed. Meanwhile, the dive team has arrived. A diver goes into the water for a closer look at what the team is up against. Yeah, the drawing we have shows that originally it's like a... It's two 45 degree angles, it's not one turn, so there's actually a 45 and then it goes for a short distance and another 45 to the flat bottom. Yeah, like when I see I come down and do a knife, and then into a 45 and then a bottom. <laughs> so it's all kind of... She's just smoked. Yeah, it's been distorted there, yeah, okay. From the dive, the McKeel team has a further understanding of the damage. The port side ballast tanks, one, two, three, and four, are punctured. Chris has one final meeting with the full crew on land before everyone gets into place. You guys, it's going to be a long day, so if you're not working, uh, you got that little cuddy cabin there. Like, if I don't need you, try and get an hour of sleep, because once we start the pumps, we don't stop. It's going to be a delicate operation. The pumping has to go evenly, otherwise the barge could turn over or split. The crane operators have pulled out as much wood as they could get a hold of, but there's still quite a bit of weight in the cargo hold. This will be countered by adding water to other areas. Once we get all the pumps set up, we get the salvage hatches on, we're going to start dewatering one and four, get the port side up. 
once the combing is clear by a little bit, we'll swing the six inch submersibles into the cargo hold and then we'll get the cargo hold dewatered and she's going to start to float. Throughout that, we're going to be adjusting uh, a little bit of water in, in starboard side. A few hours in, there's a small change in plans. We've got to extend combing here. The port side's all tidal, so we can't dewater port side, so we're going to have to extend the combing and uh, try and dewater the cargo hold there. But this weather, i got to go get the next forecast because we're getting what we're not supposed to have right now. So I need to talk. Get this boat out of the way. To keep the water from spilling back in, the crew makes a new water barrier. It's only got to work for about five hours and we should be good to go. The team has been working around the clock now, and while it's late and the pumping takes time, Chris says they're right on target. They're going to put another submersible pump on the starboard side of the barge and level it a little more. Once that tank is full, that's likely enough to get the barge to shore. It's nine in the morning as a Sioux Couchant arrives at port in Pictou. The Coast Guard tells the local media the salvage operation went pretty much like clockwork. Other crews have been brought in to clean up the wood, making sure it won't damage the environment. For much of the team, it's time to go home. A job well done. The last of the remaining cargo was removed. It's the last cargo this barge will carry. The owners have decided to scrap it as repairs will cost much more than the value of the barge.